a little ponytail girl grown up to be a woman Now she's gone in a blink of an eye She left the studs in a bucket and a clothes hanging out on the line Hey everyone, Ken's Wild here with Wild Child and welcome to another day of Vlogmas So I know it's kind of difficult to see me, um, it won't be like this for long I just got off of work, um, the joys of working graveyard shift um, and so I just fed all of the animals and now I'm going to go to bed. So I have just awoken from my coma, um, so I'm going to have some Dr. Pepper, some caffeine to wake me up, and then we're going to go outside. So today I'm not going to do any like official training sessions with any of the horses. Um, not only are we losing daylight, um, but I am so freaking exhausted from work. Um, because my boss has been flip-flopping me from afternoon shift to graveyard shift, back and forth and back and forth. That, and I've got a doctor's appointment tomorrow that's, like, making me stress the fuck out. So I really don't want to work horses. Um, so we're just going to do bra or braid manes and tails and maybe work with the dogs as well. First part of my routine, you might notice that I do not use ponytails, I use electrical tape. And so the reason that I use electrical tape is because ponytails tend to break off on their own, and when they break out, they take out large chunks of the mane. Electrical tape, for the most part, it stays in on its own. I don't really have to worry about it falling out or pulling big chunks of the mane, huh? So that's one of the big reasons I use electrical tape. So here you can see Legend's beautiful mane, all nice and braided. He's such a handsome boy. A key factor to remember about your horse's mane and tail health and coat health is that it's all from the inside out. You can use as many fancy uh, shampoos and conditioners as you want, but if you don't have the diet correct, you're not going to get um, a healthy mane and tail. One of the products that I like to use is Biomane. Not only does it keep all of my horse's manes and tails nice, happy, and healthy, um, but it also keeps them long, and I really do like those long, luscious manes and tails. Um, so yeah, work from the inside out always. Here's beautiful Filio with his wonderful mane, my beautiful sexy beast. As for the frequency of my mane and tail routine, typically I will braid the manes for a week and then unbraid them for a week and just go back and forth between the two. Another thing to keep in mind as well is that I do not use brushes because when you brush out these horses' manes, typically what happens is it also pulls out big chunks of them, so I just pull them apart with my hands. Um, here is me sporting a wonderful beard uh, made of electrical tape as I braid her mane. Uh, Delilah was interested. Uh, here she is with all of her super pretty braids. Um, she's adorable. The final thing I want to point out is that braiding manes and tails can be very beneficial for the relationship between you and your horse because it shows them that just because you put a halter on them or just because you're around them doesn't mean you're going to ask them to do something. It doesn't mean that something's going to happen. It just means that sometimes you're going to sit there, love on each other, and enjoy each other's company. Uh, so here's beautiful Rebel and her wonderful mane. Um, she has come such a long way and I'm so happy I get to braid her mane and tail. So that I have shown you guys my mane and tail routine. I'm going to uh, fill up the waters, uh, refill feeders, and go from there. Now I'm going to move on to working with the dogs, beginning with Echo. Yes. As mentioned previously, Echo is my uh, special child. He's not really huge into food motivators, and so one thing I've been really trying to work with him on is just sitting and staying focused. And one way I've been able to do this is by applying pressure to his butt, and when he sits down, I give him lots of love and attention because that is way more motivating to him than any food will ever be. Um, again, he's a weirdo. Um, and so this time you'll see that he actually learns to sit down on himself, and so I give him lots of love and attention um, as praise and a reward for doing what I asked. Moving on to Buster, um, he's my cool little boy. Um, same as last time, I kind of just work on having Buster follow me. Um, he does very good. The other thing I started to incorporate was him trying to climb up on a box. Now, why do I want him to climb up on a box? Um, this can turn into stationary targeting, um, a bunch of other things, and so I just thought it would be really fun and exciting. Uh, just a cool little trick to teach him, and he's kind of starting to get the hang of it. Um, he's a little bit nervous. Then we've got Zoe. 
The biggest thing I'm trying to work on with Zoe is the basics. You'll see here that she kind of jumps up and down trying to get that treat. I mainly just want her to sit. And so you'll see I kind of start applying pressure on her butt, uh, trying to get her to sit, and she basically just walks off. You also might notice here she just walks off entirely. And so to try and get her back interested and motivated in the session, um, I get up and start walking around. And if she follows me, then I will give her that reinforcer. Um, Zoe is a very big ball of energy uh, today. And so we may or may not get much accomplished. And at the end of the day, she's a puppy. And puppies don't always have the biggest attention spans. And last, but certainly not least, Cash. In one of the previous episodes where I worked with Cash, um, he was a little bit rusty as he hadn't been to work in quite some time. And since he's been coming to work with me, um, he is definitely not rusty anymore. And he has caught up on everything pretty well because he is quite the intelligent dog. And so I can ask him to sit and stay. And he'll sit and stay with his little tail wags. And then he'll come when I call him. Um, he'll still sit and shake, and he's, like I said, he's pretty much gotten the hang of everything. Um, again, he, he's a very quick learner. He gets the hang of things very quickly, and overall, he's just a very, very good boy, and there's a reason he is my service dog. So I hope you guys all enjoyed this podcast episode. If you have not already, please hit the red subscribe button. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and podcasts available wherever you listen to podcasts and more. The links to all of that can be found in the description, along with the links to our books, um, our sponsorships, our website, and all that fun stuff. So stay strong, stay true, stay wild, and we'll see you all tomorrow.